Education, and I am here today with Director General Hemak Sheila. He is the Director General of the NAAIP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Indigenous People, and he is joined on the couch by the lovely Galalani Ahawi. Galalani Ahawi, so beautiful, just as beautiful and <laughs> elegant as she is. And you, sir, on the My name is um, Papiato Toxiata Toxis. Papiato Toxiata Toxis. Toxis. Okay. Well, and those are your tribal names, correct? Correct. You were given government names. Those are their tribal names. We're going to get into that a little later into the discussion. But first, we want to find out what is NAAIP and why was it created? So, Director General Hemak, what is the NAAIP and why was it started? It's the National Association for the Advancement of Indigenous People. It okay. was um, created to assist tribes in uh, developing proper government-to-government -government relationship with uh, federal government and international governments. Okay, and how long has the organization been around? Nearly five years. Five years, so you're relatively new. Yes. So, and that's one of the reasons we want to have this informational session or community council, if you will, to somewhat of an introduction for the NAAIP. So, what kind of ex organization are you exactly? And when I say that, are you a peaceful organization? Are you a militant organization? What type of services are you providing for the people? We are a human rights institute. Okay. And as a human rights institute, we employ various mechanisms to satisfy the, the end. Okay. Um, we're not uh, promoting uh, anarchy or promoting violence or anti-peace. Um, at the same time, we are promoting self-determination. Okay. And self-sustainable existence. Okay. Yes. So self-determination and self-sustainability does not equate for your organization to violence and militant actions. I want to make that clear. No, I don't understand why it would. Uh, uh, the entire planet uh, has to establish some form of sustainable existence for all of mankind. Okay. We're just focused on the indigenous populations of the planet, uh, specifically the aborigines of the Americans, because of the <laughs> lack of protection that's been in place for the aborigines in that region. Okay. Yeah. So you fight for the rights and protections of indigenous people here in America? That's correct. Okay. And so what does the term American aborigine mean? Because I'd never heard that term before yesterday. American Aborigine refers to the original people of the Americas. Okay. This being identified internationally as America, and the, uh, the original people of these lands would have been referred to as Aborigine. We are descendants of the Aborigine people of the Americas. I thought that the Native Americans were... Native American is a political construct that was created by the colonizer to identify those that he wanted to lay specific claim to or rights to or to identify. So okay. he called them Native Americans and pretty much put them in a particular box or classification uh, for that purpose. The American Aborigine, however, originated in the colonizer's mind as the Negro. Okay. Uh, the dark man that he saw when he came sailing upon these lands that he called Negro. Okay. Uh, those Negro were and are the descendants of the American Aborigine, the original people of these lands, prior to the Native Americans and to mingle with the Native American cultures and uh, sometimes were <coughs> referred to as American Indian. The darker Indians of these lands have often been referred to as American Indian instead of Native American. Native American being BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, okay. recognized Indians. And um, I say Indians because that's what 
They are in the eyes of the BIA. Okay. These people consider themselves not Indians, but First Nations people and indigenous people and uh, Aboriginal people um, by various names. So, um, yes, uh, we are promoting and, and fighting for the American Aboriginal of these lands specifically. Okay, mm -hmm. and as I sit here, and as I stated earlier, we're all new members. Well, you're the founder, but we're pretty much new two years couple of months, you and I. None of you or myself fit the image of Native American or indigenous person when I hear that term. Why is that? You wanna, is that to me or? It's anything. You wanna, you wanna jump in, Papiato? I mean, I mean uh, we are not recognized as that because of our misclassification. Okay. Misclassification, what does that mean? Um, <coughs> misclassification is meaning that we were classified as something other than what we are. Okay. And so we can so we were so so it can create confusion. Create confusion and loss of identity. Uh, loss of identity. Right, yeah. And so that's what, in essence, the meat of this conversation is about identity, identity finding identity in freedom, right? Because once you realize who you are, the truth of who you are, you can move forward into the right forward. actions to, in the right stances. Okay. So, again, I just want to be clear on this because this is all new information to me. And so we were speaking earlier and you said that there have been it has been proven that indigenous people have been found in the Americas that had dreadlocks and negroid features, correct? That's correct. Anyone can Google that and, and find that information. It's um, all over the net nowadays, simply type, type in black Indians or um, African Indians or various terms that, that are used. Uh, information is easy to find, um, along with photos and paintings and that sort of thing. Uh, we're beyond <coughs> really that of, of um, in our process, uh, naturally we have to back up and, and address the educational system because that's where the young people are uh, prevalent okay. and that's where the, the culture should be readdressed uh, for, with the youth yes w without question within the education system which is one of the platforms that we're developing to actually travel to schools across the country providing with them information and um, research okay. documentation on the existence of the American Aborigine. Okay. The, um, uh, one of the processes that we're currently involved in is developing the American Aborigine Museum of um, Natural History and, and Preservation okay. as, a, as, an, as a, an NAAPI project. Uh, it's necessary that the youth be re-educated, repatriated um, into their natural culture without the Without the tricks, without, without the tricks of the colonizer uh, <laughs> identifying him as all those things that he is not. We have uh, what's called Black History Month. I understand the Euro wants to get rid of the Black History Month and provide it with um, providing in its stead um, African American Week. Um, you you change your title and, 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 and you go from a month to a, to a week. Um, I think that we should have studies throughout the year for the lost American Aborigine. When, in finding the American Aborigine, we find that the entire globe has existed under a grand deception initiated by the United States. Okay. You know, uh, we're looking at um, genocide, homicide, and all the other sides <laughs> that have been um, established by the United States uh, against our people, the American Aborigine, who are now labeled as colored, some cases white, most cases, African-American, Negro, 
uh, various terms. Uh, some of us are running around uh, in, in such desperation trying to get rid of those titles that we're uh, hiding under, under all kinds of terms and doctrines and beliefs. We're okay. trying to free ourselves from what we know does not belong to us.